Hello everyone, welcome back to AS and A-Level Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and in today's video I am continuing with chapter 15. It is a really long chapter but I hope that doesn't discourage you in any way. Um, I'm going to start with synapses or that's what I will discuss in this video. I have deliberately broken chapters 15 into different parts because I do understand that when it comes to this chapter in particular students tend to have problems with specific areas and so by breaking it apart I'm just making it easier for you to find the area where you might have an issue and you want to clarify your understanding so I hope that you find that helpful and you don't find it burdensome that the chapter is so long something else I want to say is that you can use the playlists function on the channel to sort of zoom in on a particular chapter so what I've done is I've organized every single video for each chapter under the chapter title so you can just go there and say chapter 15 and you'll be able to watch all the videos on chapter 15 so please make sure you do that if you have just found this channel I am recording the AS and A-level biology content in chronological order so students can use this to revise or they can use it to expose themselves to content before they go to the classroom or use it to reinforce their understanding it's totally up to you how you use these videos but they are mostly notes from my classroom as an A-level biology teacher so I hope that you find them helpful let us get into synapses so we've spoken about how nerve impulses are transmitted and we spoke about how the reflex arc works where we have the sensory neuron that connects to the relay neuron and then connects to the motor neuron which then sends whatever stimulus the information from the stimulus to an effector and the effector then responds but what's interesting to discover is that neurons don't actually touch each other even though we say that they are connected they have a gap of about 20 nanometers between them and that gap is called a synaptic cleft so if for example I was to draw two different neurons I'm going to use my red pen again over here if I was to draw two different neurons I would draw them as things that look like that. So these are synaptic neurons and basically this space between them is what is called the synaptic cleft over there. All right. And we also call these two neurons different things. So we call one neuron the presynaptic neuron. So it's the one that comes before the synapse. And we call another one, I'm just going to write pre -scene, and we call the one that comes after the synapse, the postsynaptic neuron over there. The question obviously now is that if there is a space between two neurons, for example, between the sensory neuron and the relay neuron, how then does the sensory neuron send impulses to the relay neuron? Because you would expect that for the impulses to be transmitted, they need to be connected by touching each other. But if they're not touching each other, what exactly is happening? That is what synaptic transmission is all about, and I'm going to explain it to you. So I'm going to use this image um, as our example because I just think it's a lot easier. So here we go. This is our first neuron, sometimes called the sending neuron or the presynaptic neuron. And this is our postsynaptic neuron. What happens in this case is that in the presynaptic neuron, let's assume this is a sensory neuron, it receives an impulse, all right? So it receives an impulse that says, for example, um, there is a bear running towards you in the woods. You're in the woods camping with your family. There's a bear running towards you. What that would cause is that it would generate an action potential within this neuron. And I know you might feel horrible about action potentials, but please don't. Watch the explainer video that I did, the one with the animation. All right, so here we go. It generates an action potential. What that action potential will then do is that it will stimulate what we call the opening of calcium channels, but I don't want to go into detail just yet. But what that action potential does is that it stimulates certain channels to open and those channels will then cause the release of these things called vesicles. Okay, These vesicles are carrying what we call neurotransmitter molecules. So these neurotransmitter molecules are like messengers. They are carrying the action potentials message. They're saying, oh, say for example, the action potential says, oh, there's a bear running towards you, okay? These um, neurotransmitters will get that message and they carry it in vesicles. They then go to the membrane of the presynaptic neuron and they bind there and the, the neurotransmitter molecules are released into the synaptic cleft. 
Once they're released into the synaptic cleft, they then go to the postsynaptic neuron, which is called the receiving neuron, and they bind to receptors on that neuron. So that neuron has receptors for them. They bind to receptors on that neuron, and by binding, they're simply sending that message across. So they're saying, I'm carrying a message from neuron A that says there's a bear running towards you. So I'm telling you, the relay neuron, that this is the message, and the relay neuron would, in the same way, transmit it to the motor neuron, and the motor neuron then sort of sends it to an effector that is able to respond. So this is what is called the synaptic transmission. The postsynaptic neuron, which is also the receiving neuron, will then depolarize and generate its own action potential and then send the message across to the next neuron. And this is what synaptic transmission is about in a nutshell. But I will say this again, so if you did not get it, don't be afraid. Now, the most common kind of synapse that you will be exposed to would be what we call the cholinergic synapse. And cholinergic synapses are so called because they use a molecule called acetylcholine as their transmitter substance. So the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. So again, what happens in this case, and I often tell students, this is a very common question in CIE, usually for four marks or five marks thereabout. What will happen is in the presynaptic neuron, that's the neuron that comes before, the action potential will result in the opening of sodium gated channels. We already know that's an action potential story, but it also opens the calcium ion voltage gated channels. So it means when the impulse reaches, okay, I'm not crossing that out, I was trying to underline it. Um, when the impulse reaches the presynaptic neuron, voltage gated channels for calcium will open and calcium ions will flow into the cytoplasm of the presynaptic neuron. Once calcium ions flow in there, it will stimulate vesicles containing acetylcholine, because remember, acetylcholine in this case is the neurotransmitter. Those vesicles containing acetylcholine would be released and they would go and bind to the presynaptic membrane and fuse with it. The membranes, the vesicles will then release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. And each vesicle has about 10,000 molecules of acetylcholine, which again might explain why your nervous system is so fast. The neurotransmitter molecules are so abundant that it is impossible for you not to get the message, except there is already a problem with the postsynaptic neuron or there is some kind of nerve condition that allows you not to. So again, let us zoom in. Right. So here we are, I'm just going to go over it again because I really feel like repetition does help students with understanding these things. So here we go. Um, we have the action potential here. This is our presynaptic neuron, okay? Always remember, sometimes this image is inverted in CIE. So always look at what the arrows, where the arrows are pointing at and which one contains the vesicles. The neuron that has the vesicles is the presynaptic neuron. The one that has receptors on its surface is the postsynaptic neuron. So that's just something I thought to point out to you. So now let's look at this. We have our presynaptic neuron and action potential is generated. The action potential causes the opening of calcium gated channels and calcium, calcium ions will flow into the cytoplasm of this neuron. That will stimulate vesicles containing acetylcholine to be released. The vesicles will move to the membrane of the presynaptic neuron where they fuse with the membrane and release acetylcholine into the um, cleft, into the synaptic cleft. What then happens is acetylcholine will bind to the receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. So this is the postsynaptic neuron, just means to call it postsyn. Acetylcholine will bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, thereby transmitting the message or the impulse to that membrane. And that membrane then becomes depolarized. So it generates its own action potential based on the message it has received from acetylcholine. Something to bear in mind here is that acetylcholine does not flow into the postsynaptic membrane. It simply binds to the receptors. But once that membrane becomes depolarized, which means once that membrane starts to get, starts to generate its own action potential, acetylcholine moves away, it moves out of the receptor, and it is broken down by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. So just think of the spelling of acetylcholine and add sterase to the end. Acetylcholinesterase will break down acetylcholine into acetate and choline. Choline would be taken back to the uh, presynaptic membrane where it combines with acetyl and, and coenzyme A to form acetylcholine, 
again. So just letting you know that acetylcholine is not degraded as such in the postsynaptic membrane and it doesn't flow into the postsynaptic membrane. Rather, it is degraded by an enzyme called acetylcholine nesterase, um, which is something you can see here where it says degrading enzyme, by acetylcholine nesterase broken down into acetate and choline. Choline is recycled combined with acetylcholine enzyme A to form acetylcholine again. And this is something I often have to rehash with students, that if acetylcholine were to remain bound to the postsynaptic membrane, that membrane will stay in a depolarized state, which means that it will continue generating action potentials even when it doesn't need to. So acetylcholine needs to be removed and recycled back to the presynaptic membrane. Now, what do synapses do and why are they important? Synapses ensure that transmission occurs in one direction. So there is one way transmission of your nerve impulses. Synapses allow integration of impulses. They allow the integration of pathways and they are also involved in memory and learning. So you will always remember how to respond to something without necessarily knowing, without necessarily thinking about it, especially if you've experienced a certain kind of stimulus before. And this is something that synapses help with. This is also usually a format question and I tell students this is the easiest format question you could get because you just have to write what the roles of synapses are um, and you can see here I've already laid them out in blocks for you so that it is easy. That is it on synapses. Very short, very sweet, very simple. I hope you understood that. If you don't, post a comment in the post a question in the comments and I will respond to you ASAP. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good time. Goodbye.